Hello, good evening everybody and thank you for joining us for our live stream tonight, uh, which is all about shining a spotlight on learning disability nursing. Uh, we're very proud at De Montfort University to offer this field of practice and tonight we're going to cover all things about what is learning disability nursing, what isn't learning disability nursing and talking about the uh, array of career progression opportunities within that role. We're going to be joined tonight by some of our teaching staff that teach on our learning disability nursing programme as well as um, former students who are alumni who are out working in practice and we've also got some current students with us as well who's going to talk to you a little bit about what it's like to be a learning disability student nurse at the moment. So my name is Vanessa and I work in the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences as a marketing and recruitment officer and I'm joined tonight as well by um, two very important people. These are the learning um, disability nursing teaching staff that we have with us tonight and we have Sam H. Hi Sam. Hi Vanessa. Hi everyone. And we have Justine. Hello everyone. Thank you. So between us all, we're going to be hosting tonight's live stream, taking you through um, a variety of different discussion points and topics all around learning disability nursing. So Sam, just a quick overview about who you are at, at DMU. Yes, yeah, so my name's I'm one of the many Sams that you'll meet today. So I'm for the purposes of this Sam H. Um, uh, so I've been at DMU for over a year now as a learning disability nurse in lecturer. But before that, I worked as a learning disability nurse in Nottingham. Um, which is where my uh, clinical background is. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Sam. And Justine, a little bit about who you are. Hello, I'm uh, the Learning Disability Subject Lead and I'm a senior lecturer here, here at DMU. Brilliant. And I'm sure amongst you, you've got lots of experiences yourself within learning disability nursing. And it's important to stress that um, the majority, well, in fact, all of our nursing teachers have across all fields of practice are all um, either still nursing, ex-nurses, practicing nursing. So they've got a wealth of experience that they bring to each field of practice. And in fact, Justine, I'm sure that you'll back me up on this to say that the learning disability nursing team are actually one of the most highly qualified teaching teams that we have in our fields of practice. Is that right? That's right. We're one of the most highly qualified teams that offer learning disability nursing across the whole of the UK. So we're a very, very qualified team. And so what I mean by qualified is in terms of higher qualifications, PhDs and that kind of thing. And yeah, even within DMU, we're a very specialist team with a lot of qualifications. So yeah, yeah I'm very proud of the team that I'm part of. Absolutely. And I think that's just really important to highlight that because it just means that the, the teaching staff that are going to be teaching you on the course are all, like I say, all very passionate about learning disability, but also very highly skilled and knowledgeable about it as well. So excellent. So thank you very much, Justine and Sam, for hosting along with me tonight. Um, and what I'm going to do now is just bring in the other two Sams that you're going to meet uh, tonight. So um, we have Sam C. So hi, Sam. Hello, my name is Sam. I'm one of the acute learning disability liaison nurses at um, a local hospital. Brilliant. And when did you actually graduate from the programme, Sam? Um, it was a year ago, probably three days ago. So 20 Excellent. last year. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So fresh out into practice. So that's amazing. So thank you for um, giving up your time to come and talk to us. And then we've also got the last of our Sam trio. Hi, Sam. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Sam Screeton and I'm a learning disability nurse in practice. Um, I have two job roles. I'm a primary care liaison nurse for part of the week and um, I'm the clinical lead for the mortality reviews for the other, the other half of the week. Um, I originally qualified in 2001 and then I uh, graduated again uh, last year. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So we're delighted to have um, both Sams, in fact, all Sams uh, with us tonight. And it's lovely to have some alumni to come back and obviously share their experiences of what they've been doing since they've graduated from our learning disability nursing programme. So thank you very much. And then, as I explained at the very beginning, we've also got some current students with us um, this evening as well. Uh, so let's bring them in now. So we have Renee. Hi, Renee. Hello, um, I'm Renee. Um, I'm a year three uh, learning disability student nurse. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And we also have Izzy and Annie. Hi. Hi, I'm Annie. I'm a third year student nurse and I'm out currently on placement at a specialist community team. Hi. Hi. I'm Izzy. I'm also a third year and I'm currently on placement at CAMS. 
Brilliant. And it's probably important to stress that you two are bubbled together. So uh, we're yeah, not breaking yeah, any we COVID. <laughs> we're not breaking any COVID restrictions there. So that's fine. Just wanted to point that out. And then last but not least, we have Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hi, I'm Joanna. I'm also a third year student. Brilliant. So we have an absolutely fantastic lineup this evening and it's going to be great to sort of talk to you more and find out a little bit more about your experiences of learning disability nursing. So thank you all for joining us. So I'm just very temporarily just going to take everybody out that doesn't need to be here just at the moment, just whilst we go back to Sam and Justine, who are going to start us off with our first topic of discussion, which is actually... Um, talking to us a little bit about what actually is a learning disability because um, I think obviously quite a lot of people myself included would be one of these people that actually when you talk about learning disability nursing you may have heard of it but you're not exactly sure what what does that involve so Justine what what is a learning disability and what isn't a learning disability? Absolutely I think it is really important that that's where we start before we talk about learning disability nursing, who are the people that we actually care for? So first of all, what learning disability isn't? Learning disability isn't things like dyslexia and, and learning needs like that. Learning disability is where people have a limit, a lower IQ than the general population and need support to live ordinary lives, to do the things that you and I take for granted. Sam, do you want to add anything to that? <laughs> No, it's a good start. Um, you're, as Justine exactly uh, quite rightly says, it affects how a person uh, understands information, it affects how a person communicates, and probably most importantly for us, it affects the person for their whole lives. Um, there are about 1.5 million people in the UK that have a learning disability, um, and each of those people are unique. People will present in different ways. As Justine says, people will have different abilities. Um, so because everyone is unique and will present differently, learning disability nursing is one of the unique fields of practice as well, because we need to be as unique as they are. I think that's a really good point, Sam, that it's for life. So often when people think about nursing, they think about making people better. But actually, we support people from birth all the way through their life. And, and it's not about making them better, is it? It's about the whole life process. So, yeah, that was a really good point. Shall we... Okay. Yeah, so now so we've spoken a little bit about what a learning disability is and, and who who you sort of work with. So let's talk a bit a little bit about actually nursing uh, learning disability nurses. So who are they? Sam, do you want to answer or shall I? <laughs> oh, you go first. I'll let you go. OK, so <laughs> learning disability nurses work with those sort of people. So um, just to say a little bit more about people with learning disabilities, it might involve people with autism or Down syndrome or other genetic conditions like that. So often people aren't sure what learning disability is, but they've probably heard of those conditions. So that can be useful. And we work Learning disability, I think to sum up what nurses do is really difficult because nurses do so many different varied roles in, in all the specialities. When we think about adult nursing, you can't sum that up in a few words. And learning disability nursing is no different to that. We just do so many different roles. And that's one of the really exciting things about it. And it's evolving all the time. There are roles out there now that when I was a student just simply didn't exist. I think the roles that both sums do that are joining us in a minute neither of those roles existed when I was a student so that's actually really exciting that new roles are happening all the time. So what was your previous role Justine before you came into teaching what was it that you were doing? So the last job I did before I came to be a lecturer, I was classed as a clinical nurse specialist and that involved, it had many different facets to it. And what I loved was every day was different. It was really unpredictable. And I specialised in working with people who display challenging behaviour. So what we mean by that is people who can be violent to others or they might self-harm, that kind of thing. And it was just brilliant I've been qualified a long time and I can honestly say in all those years I have never regretted it for a day every day is just so varied and different before yeah. that I was a manager and managed a service in the NHS and um, before that I was a staff nurse in that same service that I managed and again that was for people with challenging behavior so that's the specialism that I've come from Yes, Sam H, how about you? What was your previous role before you came to DMU? 
So, a bit, to be fair, a bit like the other two Sams who are uh, primary care liaison nurses, my role before I came to DMU was as a primary care liaison nurse. Um, it's not a prerequisite, you don't have to be called Sam to get the role, although it would seem so from tonight. Um, but previous to that, I worked with people with profound and multiple physical and learning disabilities. So, um, people that had quite severe learning needs, but also quite severe physical and health needs as well. Um, I worked in residential nursing services, so it was people's homes. People had lived there for 20, 30 years. Um, and as Justine said earlier, I was just there to support them with their activities that they would do every day. Yeah. And I think it's just yeah highlighting actually just by talking to you both it's just not a but it's not like you would have as a traditional nurse in your head hospitals GP surgeries that kind of image of a nurse it's obviously completely different to that obviously they probably do still work in those areas but it yeah. is much more um, so yeah it's really useful just to set that set the scene and I think we've got a video haven't we that we'd like to play which just encapsulates a little bit about that so let's bring that in and then we'll go and speak to Sam and Sam a little bit more about their roles. Did you know that there are over 1.5 million people with learning disabilities in the UK? What is a learning disability? It affects the way a person understands information and how they communicate. It affects people for their whole lives and those with learning disabilities need a unique approach to care. They need people who think a little differently. Learning disability nurses have one of the most varied, exciting and life-changing careers in healthcare. You might think nursing means uniforms and often the same routine. But learning disability nursing is not like that. Every day is different. Learning disability nurses have to use a huge range of skills and talents. Sometimes they're investigators trying to discover what's wrong and why. Other times they're activists championing the rights of the people they support. They're discoverers finding new imaginative ways to deliver care and creatives who always look at things differently. Learning disability nurses work with people from all backgrounds, from all ages, in all surroundings, and across many different places. They're a force for social good, often working with the most marginalized and disadvantaged in society. People with learning disabilities sometimes have needs that are overlooked, but from simple everyday things to setting up life-changing support for those in their care, learning disability nurses transform lives and the UK needs a lot more of them. A lot more people willing to do an amazing job. A lot more people willing to take a different path. So do you value equality and human rights? Do you want to fight injustice? Can you look deeper than the surface? And do you want to do something different every day? Then look no further. Learning Disability Nursing. Dare to take a different path. Excellent. And I think that really just sets it up nicely. I, exactly the kind of skills that you might be looking for to be a learning disability nurse. Uh, what should you be really sort of passionate about or interested in? And I think what comes across as well is about the fact that just a sheer range um, of, like you say, it's some people might be watching tonight that are thinking about children's nursing, for example, and, and or wanting to work with children. There'll be people that might want to work with people that have got mental health issues. But what's clear from learning disability nursing is that you can do all of that and be a learning disability nurse. So um, I think that's really, you know, great video. So let's bring in um, our alumni, so Sam Souter and Sam Screeton. Thank you. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Um, so I think Sam and Justine just wanted to have a, a chat with you about what you're doing now since you've sort of graduated and what roles you have. So Justine, Sam, do you want to fire the questions at them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> we're good at this. Aren't we smooth? <laughs> um, yeah, it'd just be really nice to hear what you guys have been up to since you graduated. So, um, Sam, Sutra, as you graduated most recently, is it all right if we go to you first? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I graduated this time last year, so I'm not newly qualified anymore because we're a few days out of it, but kind of nearly, newly qualified. Um, my first was a care liaison nurse. Um, and that was in the community, and that was working with people with learning disabilities in terms of um, sort of getting equal and equity sort of access into healthcare. So as we know, um, people with learning disabilities unfortunately die 20 years younger than the general population. And that role really was to sort of like 
sort of get rid of that. Let's, how can we get an equal access? How can we get these patients into sort of healthcare? And that was my role then. And then after, um, so now I have a different role. Um, so within 10 months, I progress from a band five to a band six. Um, and now I'm an acute learning disability liaison nurse. So it's a very similar role but in the hospital. So I do very similar things. So we work primarily with people with learning disabilities. So we get, if we get patients in that have a learning disability, they will come to our team, we'll support that patient, we'll make sure that the Equality Act is being met. So we'll look at things like reasonable adjustments and um, is that person having the same equal care as everybody else, which is the most important thing. So I'm doing a similar role to what I did in the community, but in the hospital and a little bit more of a specialist role. Uh, thank you, Sam. Um, other Sam, <laughs> our remaining Sam, last but not least, Sam, um, you've been qualified quite a while. Are you okay to take us through your career history? I will. I'll, I'll make it short and sweet. We'll be here <laughs> um, quite a, quite a few different jobs, so I'll just focus on, on the most recent, but that's 11 years in now. So um, a little bit like Justine, my sort of early background when I first qualified in 2001, um, I worked with people who'd be described as having behaviours that challenge and I worked um, on hospital wards as they were still open at that time and, and then sort of moved into forensic mental health and, and very much worked with people with that dual diagnosis around um, learning disability and a variety of mental health um, uh, difficulties and issues and some offending behaviour. That was really, really interesting. Um, and then... Um, Somehow I, I found myself um, becoming very interested in the health inequalities and uh, as Sam Suter was saying, the, the very much this thing about, you know, people with learning disabilities who, who are dying younger than the rest of the population, they're dying of different things to the rest of the population. But sometimes when we're working perhaps in mental health services, we actually overlook that some things are happening that are actually in relation to physical health and so I started to move um, across into the primary care liaison nurse role uh, 11 years ago. And I support 30 plus GP practices um, to deliver high quality care to all of their learning disability patients. So that's um, just over a thousand uh, patients with a learning disability registered at those practices. So one of the ways, obviously I can't work with all of those more than a thousand people. I mean, learning disability nurses are good, but we do have our limitations. <laughs> we would spread ourselves very thinly to do that so what we do is work very strategically with um, the GP practices and key staff within those practices so I deliver a lot of training to GPs and practice nurses to help them to understand about those health inequalities to help them to understand about the law as, as Sam Suter said so the Equality Act the Mental Capacity Act um, and help them to really develop their skills so some of it's done in very much a kind of taught way and um, you know physically um, answering questions and things like that and then sometimes it's about supporting them to actually see their patients and and have those interactions and um offer specialist advice and guidance sometimes in the moment uh with with those individuals and that can then trigger all sorts of things and lead us off down lots of other different pathways and support around referrals into other parts of the learning disability service with other nurses in other roles um so yeah so that's that's my primary care liaison nurse role and then since January of this year, um, so so that that's a band seven role, uh, the primary care liaison nurse role. And since January of this year, I've been seconded two and a half days a week into an 8A role um, as the clinical lead. Uh, so that part of the role covers um, the whole of um, the 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 area really. So all of the clinical commissioning groups in in our area, um, and I support. So there's um. There's a programme in an NHS England programme about learning from the deaths of people with learning disabilities. So unfortunately, um, you know, we, we see we see deaths where there may have been inequalities in access to healthcare that may or may not have contributed to those deaths. So everybody who dies has a review um, and I'm responsible for making sure um, that that's to a high standard and that the clinical quality um, is acceptable and that we identify learning and make recommendations to services who you know, perhaps need to do things differently or better. So quite different jobs, but actually 
go quite well together because um, if we don't get the physical healthcare stuff right at primary care level, then unfortunately, in some cases, we end up um, reflecting on that and, and looking at lessons that we could, could have learned. So, so I think that's me. I won't bore you with anything any further back than that. I'll be here all day. <laughs> that's fantastic Sam thank you and thank you to the other Sam as well you can see from both those examples just how varied careers can be even in a short space of time like Sam Souter or every slightly longer time like uh, Sam Screeton but all of the careers that you talked about were the examples in that video so you were investigators you were advocates you were educators um, all of those things just show how varied a career in learning disability nursing is um, and one of the draws for me uh, into learning disability nursing was the not only the progression for your career but also the progression for education as well um, and Justine I'm going to come to you first about this if you don't mind because I know education is important to you. <laughs> obviously <laughs> thank you Sam yeah obviously now the course is a degree level course and the governing body of nurses the Nursing Midwifery Council require all nurses to stay up to date but you could do the course and just that be it, get your degree, and, and apart from staying up to date, that would be it. But if you wanna go on and do more, you can, and the world is your oyster in terms of what options you want. Through my own choice, not because I had to, I've pretty much studied all the time since I qualified. I've never really stopped, only for brief periods of time. So because I'm quite old, when I qualified, we didn't get a degree, we got a diploma. And quite quickly, I decided I wanted to get a degree. So I did that. And then when I was a manager, I did a postgrad um, course in management. And then I thought I quite like the idea of being a lecturer. So I did my master's. <laughs> and then I did a teaching qualification. And then I've done a PhD most recently, <laughs> which has taken a while. But what that illustrates is there is no end in sight. You can just keep going in terms of what you want to study there's also a lot of specialist areas that you can do so um i know someone who's got a master's in epilepsy because that's relevant to her role so there's there's specialist um, courses that you can do or quite broad nursing masters and that kind of thing sam uh, you did a master's with us didn't you so um and you said earlier about you've recently graduated and that's what you meant it was with your masters wasn't it do you want to tell us a bit about that yeah yeah so i i started a, a part-time masters alongside my uh, my work so because i think sometimes also um perhaps more mature students or where people are not sure if they can juggle all of the plates and so i proved that in recent years. So I started my master's and at the same time as having a, a young family um, and, and, and whilst working full time. So yeah, I finished a master's in specialist nursing with a specialist practitioner qualification last year. Um, and prior to that, a good few years ago now, but um, I developed a, an interest in autism and did a postgraduate certificate in Asperger syndrome. And so yeah, there, there's so many different types of opportunities. Um, and it's, you know, it, it, it can be something that kind of you take at your own pace or, or as Justine said, you know, I have colleagues who, who you know, they, they did their degree, they're, they're very happy in, in keeping their skills up to date that, that's relevant to their job. But also, um, you know, it's really good to have, have opportunities for, for, for career development. Just on that point, Sam, just you just mentioned something now that it's bringing a question that we've had, which is, um, so I have a family and I'm worried about fitting my studies in around childcare. Any advice? So obviously you seem as if you'd be a fantastic person to sort of give some advice, seeing as that you've managed to do that and you're, you're still continuing to do that. So what kind of advice would we give to someone about that? Because we do know that we attract probably quite a lot of mature mm -hmm. students onto our nursing programmes that do have families. And, and how do you manage to juggle it all? So when I started my master's, I didn't have a family. And by the end of my first year, I was having my first little boy. So I actually had two children whilst working, whilst uh, studying for my master's. Wasn't entirely the plan for it to be like that, but that's how it was. And, and, I, and I got there in the end and I did graduate. So I, I would be, it would be very foolish of me to say it's easy but I am the living and breathing proof that it is possible. And, you know, I think whatever you do in life, there's probably never enough hours in the day, but, but it can be done. It's about 
having a good support network around you, being able to sort of maybe step out of being mum or dad for a little while to just take some time for your studies. Um, certainly locally, um, my employer were very supportive and I was able to have study time during the working day. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it is a juggle, um, but it's, it, it's and, and in some ways it felt so much more rewarding because it had been a bit more of a juggle. When I qualified the first time round, it was just me and I was young and, you know, could, so, so you know, it, it's not necessarily having the same perhaps student experience as, as maybe those who were younger without the commitments or whatever, maybe it is, I don't know, it's, it's everybody each to their own, but yeah, it, it is absolutely doable. Um, it's just about having perhaps a different focus and a different structure and yeah. And other Sam, I think you've got a family as well, haven't you? So do you have anything to add to that in terms of advice? Yeah, so I started the degree having two children quite young. The children were quite young at the time. Um, and I would say um, to that question, really utilise the support network at university as well, because I had such a great support network, network at uni. So I think sometimes a problem shared is a problem halved. And if you've got that right support network and if you're struggling, we're human beings, we can't do everything. So I think just having that support, going to the right people at uni, which are absolutely fantastic. And I will stand by, I know this is about democracy, but honestly, I will stand by and say to this day now, the support that I got at university is why I'm here now because it was just amazing. And having the support at home also is great too. You think you do utilize your support network, speak to your personal tutors if you're struggling. That's okay to struggle, just, just speak to them and let them know, so yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think um, we'll hear from some of our current students as well in a moment who obviously testify about what the teaching team are like at DMU as well. Um, so I think we'll probably move. Should we, should we bring the current students in? They've been sitting very patiently, have they? Uh, so we'll bring those in for a little chat as well. So um, we'd just like to thank Sam and Sam for, for joining us. And um, it's been great to hear your experiences. And it's obviously amazing to see the achievements that you've had since um, you've both graduated. So thank you, Sam. H and Justine do you want to add anything to say bye-bye to Sam and Sam? Thank you both for doing this in your own time we do really appreciate it Sam suitor don't go okay. <laughs> I'm going to come back to you in a little while yeah okay brilliant <laughs> okay so let's um we'll just bring in our current students now okay so let's go. We have Renee. Let's bring Renee back in. And we have Izzy and Annie. And hopefully we have Joanna. Here she is. Hello, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for sitting very patiently and waiting to sort of come and talk to us. So, Sam, what's the first question that we're going to ask our current students? So I think it builds on what we were just talking about, actually, about the support. So um, it would be nice just to hear what your thoughts are about life as an LD student nurse at DMU. Who's going first? So who's going to go first? So we say Joanna. So let's go question. to Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joanna, you're on mute. Just unmute yourself. Um, you life go. as a student at DMU has been re. Oh. Are you okay, Joanna? You just need to unmute yourself. That's it. <laughs> yeah, hello. Yeah, I was saying um, life as a DMU student has been really good. And um, originally I started in 2017 in March and then I took some time out to have a baby. And like what uh, Sam and Sam were saying before, life does happen. And um, I was really anxious. I was really distressed. But I found support even before I went on maternity leave because I was very poorly and I thought, how am I going to do this? And I went and I spoke to Justine and she said, no, just relax, we'll support you and we'll take care of everything. So I took 18 months out and when I came back, I was coming on to a new cohort, everything has changed, new friends and everything. But in that way, I felt really supported and the key thing and the important thing was I knew that I could ask for help within um uh within people with uh in the um 
in the learning disability field of practice. So I could ask for help. And it wasn't just about asking for help from my tutors, from my friends, but I could also ask help from my mentors in practice. So I, in that way, I felt really supported. And as well, during this pandemic where everything has, has just been going, um, where everything has just uh, taken a turn, I've really felt supported. Being in the learning disability field of practice, there's been really massive support. I think it also has to do that with the fact that we're quite a small group. So we sort of like know each other. We know where to go. We know who's who. We know who to turn to. And I felt really, really supported within this pandemic. And as it as it as it's starting to ease now, it's as everything is starting to ease now, you sort of like start to feel yourself relaxing to say, oh, actually, I'm in third year now and starting to relax and everything is going according to plan. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, Izzy and Annie, how about you? So what made you sort of come to learning disability at, at DMU? So why did you choose to come onto the course? Izzy, we'll go to you first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, I wanted to be a nurse since I was little, and then I couldn't decide what I wanted to work with adults or children. So I figured, learning disability, I can do both. So it's just yeah, just excellent. Go into it. So, so Annie, how about you? Yeah, I think I kind of always knew that I wanted to do something that helped people. And actually, like our group of clients are people who sometimes they can't help themselves. So they need someone to help them kind of with everyday day to day things. And that was something that actually really that I really wanted to do. Um, so, yeah, that kind of is what, what, what it was for me. Yeah. And Rene, how about you? So what was it about learning disability nursing that attracted you to the come to the field of practice? Um, just the wide variety, I think. Um, like Izzy said, um, my passion kind of lies from um, working in a special needs school with children. Um, but then also, obviously, through learning disability nursing, you've got the older um, age end of the scale as well. So it is really varied. Um, yeah, so that's why, why I came into it. Yeah. And Sam and Justine, I imagine that as you're quite a small field of practice, you really do get to know your students quite well compared to, say, one of the bigger fields of practice like adult nursing, obviously, where there are, you know, it's a massive cohort. Um, I suppose, like I say, they all get to know who you are and you get to know who they are. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Think, um, quite often the students go out into practice and they'll be working with nurses that maybe I taught and certainly that know uh, Sam and I as well and the other learning disability lecturers at DMU. We are a really small specialism and everybody does know everybody else, but that is part of what makes it nice, I think. We're like one huge family. Um, but in terms of the students, yeah, I think we get pretty close. I think I get over attached to some people. I think I treat everyone like I'm your big sister. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, are a very small team. And just adding to your point, Justine, you taught me as well. <laughs> didn't I did. you? Which makes it sound like I'm a hundred or something. <laughs> uh, well, I've just put the um, web page down there as well, because obviously we've sp spoken a lot about the, the role of a learning disability nurse and perhaps not a lot about the actual course at DMU. But obviously, if you want to find out more information about our course, then obviously you can go onto the web pages. There's lots of useful information on there as well. And um, so you can find out about the course content, the entry criteria. It's all on that web page as well. Um, but I think we wanted to sort of touch a little bit about the course in terms of looking at because placements obviously uh, form a big part of, of the um, teaching and uh, on our nursing programmes. And I believe that you guys are out on placements at the moment. So um, Izzy and Annie, do you want to um, tell us a little bit about obviously placements and what you've been doing? So obviously I'm at CAM, so we're because of COVID, it's like restriction on what we're doing but we're still getting out on observations where possible and where safe to do so. We're still joining in like MDT meetings, a lot of things over teams and stuff. It's just trying to make the most out of a bit of a worse situation because obviously community is a lot of going into people's homes and obviously because of COVID, it's all a bit more restricted, but we're doing the best we can. <laughs> Yeah, and Annie, how about you? Where? What about your placement? 
Yeah, so I'm a specialist community team um, and yeah, kind of the same. Um, things are a little bit more restricted, but kind of like we're still going out to places, um, still going out on visits. Um, and yeah, we're doing quite a lot of like welfare calls over the phone. Um, so I've been involved in those as well, which has been really, really helpful um, to kind of get to know the patients that, that way. Um, and yeah, we have like, um, they were saying in my placement that they've like changed quite a lot of how they work. Um, so quite a lot of it's now on Teams, but um, yeah, most of it's still going ahead. Um, and yeah, it's a great time really. <laughs> yeah, and Renee, what about you? What, what's your placement? Um, so similar to Annie, I'm based at a specialist community placement. Um, yeah, I suppose they've, they've changed um, how they accommodate students slightly because of coronavirus. But actually, um, I think it's given us more opportunities or different opportunities, um, especially with the use of technology. Um, so, yeah, I'm based there and we're doing home visits. Um, the setting I'm at, I've also got the chance to work in a clinical environment as well um yeah it's good despite the circumstances yeah yeah and obviously you, you've you've all of you have picked up on the fact that obviously due to covid things are very different at the moment so justine and sam do you want to just touch a little, a little bit about obviously what's happening with, with regards to blended learning and and what's happening on the course at the moment justine should we go to you first yeah sure obviously it took us all surprise by surprise in the beginning so we had to very quickly change the way we worked and we all had to get used to using things like we're using today technology but I think we settled into it pretty quick and Sam and I wanted to make sure the students didn't feel disconnected from us so we met with you guys regularly didn't we to and sometimes it was just for a chat, just to say, hi, and how are you feeling? Because we were aware some of them lived by themselves and we really didn't want them to feel isolated. Did we Did we meet that target? Is he Annie and Renny? You can tell me I failed if you like. Yeah, you did. Yeah, <laughs> did amazing. And I can guarantee I wouldn't have done as well as I have if it wasn't for you guys. No. Literally, like, I got some of my best, like, academic marks throughout lockdown, but that's because of, like, the support that you guys gave us, like, even going through, like, week after week, what we had to do, it was so helpful, because honestly, I don't think I would have done as well if we didn't have that support. Oh, thank you. Because we tried to use it as an opportunity because initially it was a time where you should have been out in placement and obviously they couldn't go. So rather than do placement, we, we used that time wisely, didn't we, to get your academic side done and, and we met regularly to support you with that. And I think, yeah, we tried to support you because we like when you come in. Um, normally for lectures we'll chat before and chat after and that bit was the bit that was missing so that was why we were doing these regular catch-ups but I'm glad it worked for you. <laughs> I do miss yeah. it that's why you sometimes turn the water cooler conversations those ones you have in the corridor isn't it when you're walking down Um one of the other things that we've been trying to carry on in lockdown is the uh, learning disability club that Justine started at DMU um, just before I got there Um do you want to talk about it Justine before I talk about your idea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, learning, as, as we've established, learning disabilities is the smallest specialism within nursing. And often in each cohort, there's hundreds of people doing adult nursing, but only small numbers doing learning disabilities. And I was really aware of that. So I wanted them to feel like they were part of a bigger group. So periodically, every few weeks, we get all three years of the learning disability student nurses together. And it's very informal. No Normally, pre-COVID, we all took food <laughs> and shared. It was like a giant picnic, wasn't it? And it was just about the third years being able to advise the second years and the second years being able to offer advice to the, the first years. And just also we'd sometimes bring in guest speakers from practice to talk about their roles. And, um, and we spoke about study as well, didn't we? And one of them, uh, the sort of stuff we spoke about today. But it was very informal and casual. But again, another opportunity for us to get to know them and for them to get to know us, really. We want you guys to see us as human beings, not just some lecturer. <laughs> what were you going to add, Sam? No, I was just going to say you're quite right. I, um, I don't think we I'd like to think we don't come across as just lectury types. We're too informal for that, I think. 
I can't come across as lecturer with girls allowed behind me, can I? <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, pre-COVID, post, well, I say post-COVID, we're not quite post-COVID yet, are we? But pre-COVID and I guess still during COVID, um, we are trying to support you in different ways. And, and for the new students that um, have come on board now, our 2009 students, um, they're my personal huge group. And they're starting at a time where none of the lectures so far have been face-to-face. -face. Everything from the beginning has been online. Um, so I've been really conscious about making sure that we're all there to support them and we've been having weekly online meetings um, just like Justine says just casual chats not for anything in particular just so we can get to know each other put names to faces all the kind of things that we get used to doing um, face to face that is sometimes a little bit more difficult and maybe we have to um, plan a little bit more to do online but um, I think so far it's been working okay and Hopefully it will continue to work well as uh, COVID progresses and hopefully goes away. Yeah. And we, we're still going to maintain the LD club. Um, we're going to, we've done one so far um, through technology and we're going to do another one soon to welcome the first years who have just joined us. So we're still trying our best to maintain those support systems that we have. Yeah, and I think at DMU, we are, like I say, we're very good at making sure that we can support our students through um, their studies, through their family, you know, anything that they've got going on in their family or personal lives as well. And hence, we have a personal tutor system uh, whereby you can obviously contact them. And I think, the, like I say, being the benefit of being on a small field of practice, a small cohort, is that you really do get to know those um, personal tutors and tutees really well. And I think that's such a, a bonus if you're thinking about studying nursing and you want that kind of support. And then think, obviously it's great. Sorry, Vanessa. I was just yeah. going to say, I think within learning disabilities, we are the most friendly because we're so small. But I have to say, before working at DMU, I did work at another university. And one of the first impressions I got when I joined DMU was actually we are all really friendly and all the lecturers yeah. are really approachable for all of the students. I mean, mainly us, but across across the other specialities too. I think we're a pretty friendly bunch here. Absolutely. So we've talked a lot about what it's like at the moment, but obviously um, pre-COVID, if we talk a little bit about, you know, when everything was shiny, happy, lovely, and we could be on campus and we could be going about our usual day-to-day -day business, um, just some of the opportunities that we offered to students um, in terms of things like, I know we, we've done, uh, you know, DMU Global, so lots of people listening might have already looked at that and know that that's something that we offer. So um, I'm just going to bring um, Sam back in um, because um, I know that that Sam was fortunate enough to go on a fantastic um, DMU Global trip. But before we talk to you, Sam, Justine, do you want to talk a little bit about DMU Global or just some of the wider opportunities that we offer students? Yeah, absolutely. So um, DMU Global is where we run uh, trips overseas and they're usually course specific. So something to do with whatever course you're on. It's not exclusive to nursing. The other courses run it too. And um, just one example, for three years on the trot, I've taken a group of students over to Helsinki and we've um, got a a sister university over there and, and they do um, nursing and our students have been taught by the lecturers over there and we've taught the Finnish students as well and we've seen the healthcare provision over in Helsinki which is really really good so that's one that's for all the specialities within nursing but obviously um, we can also do some that are a little bit more um, field specific and Sam did an amazing trip um, to Peru. So Sam, over to you, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, in fact, it's weird because um, going back to that question about having a family and stuff, I remember in um, it was the first week of induction at university and one of the lead um, nursing leads at the time said to us all as a cohort, please enjoy your time at university, utilize DMU Global, like go and see friends and do just utilize it. It's not all about study. And I remember sitting there thinking, oh, that don't really apply to me because I've got kids. So I'm not going to be able to utilize. I'm just going to be work, work, work. And actually, I was completely wrong. So I thought, right, I'm just going to go for it and apply to do this trip to Peru. And this trip, this global trip was... Um, we work with children that were had um, learning disabilities, so it's an orphanage. Um, so in Peru, if um, so, some children that have got a learning disability will be given up by their families. 
um, and they have to, and they will go into an orphanage. So they need all the money they can get, all the volunteers they can get. This picture now, um, all that there, I did a bit of um, I did a bit of fundraising before I went, and that was quite close to my heart because um, my sister had a profound learning disability. So I did a bit of fundraising in memory of her to take some money over so I could buy these children that didn't have anything. Um, some toys, because to you and me, a toy is it's nothing, is it? But to them, it was absolutely everything. Um, and these children and this place that I went to, honestly, it absolutely changed my vision. It changed everything in sort of aspects of life. It was, I could never have wished to have this experience like I did have. It was amazing. So we, um, I was the only nurse actually. So there was people from different parts of university. So there were some law students and actually I was the only nurse and learning disability nurse, which was fitting. Um, so we also stayed with a Peruvian family, which was amazing. So we didn't just go into like a group together. We stayed with a local family, local Peruvian family. We got to see all the culture of Peru, sort of live the life of what they were living and then go and do this amazing volunteering. Um, and also do our own things in the weekends as well. So one of the photos with me was me at um, Rainbow Mountain. So I climbed over Rainbow Mountain. Some of, the, some of them went to Machu Picchu, but it was just absolutely incredible. Something I thought, oh, no, I won't get to do this because, I'm, one, I've got kids, and two, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to have time. But I did get to do it. And if you can do anything like this, and hopefully when it all comes back up and everything's back to normal, please like try and utilize the DMU global thing because honestly the memories that I have from that trip will last me forever and it's absolutely amazing. Well your pictures certainly look amazing Sam and I think like you say it's not only was it relevant for your course and you got to do something that you know you got to um, embed the skills that you've been learning on the program and, and obviously work in that orphanage but also that chance to experience that culture and, and really embrace yeah. that as well which I think is amazing and I definitely echo your words about if anyone's watching and any of our current students, you know, once we're up and open again and we can travel and go to these places, mm -hmm. you really should make the most of them and, and really go. And I think sometimes I speak to people about nursing and they're a bit worried about whether they can go on these kind of courses because we, you know, we drill into them about how intense the course is and the fact that, you know, it's 50% theory, 50% practical, and it's like, a, you know, how many weeks you're going to be learning. So sometimes you nurse, you know, nursing students think, is it for me? Can I do that? You know, can I go on these courses? But I think, you know, your testament to showing that actually you can go and have an amazing experience and this is as well like utilize your personal tutors utilize um, their staff because these courses are not just for other fields are not just for other courses for other sort of courses like law or accountants we we also deserve if anybody more than anybody deserve to go on these trips like we're working like we don't have time off in the summer we don't have time off at half term we put everything into it and you will honestly get so much out i got so much out of it and i think you would too yeah i'm going to bring renee back in because i know that renee's also recently been on a, a global trip so you want to talk a little bit about where you went renee yeah, so it was this time last year actually i got uh, to go on a dmu global trip to india um, and there was a group of 10 students, uh, nursing students. Um, I think I was the only uh, learning disability nursing student that got onto the trip. And then there was child um, and adult and mental health students. Um, and we basically went out um, to support the local community um, in Ahmedabad in India. Um, and we actually taught um, very basic, um, basic life support, wound care, um, personal safety um, to children um, and their families. So it was really good. Obviously, that related to my nursing course. Um, and it, yeah, it was just such an amazing opportunity. And obviously, I'm so grateful that I got to go last year because this year, obviously, it, it's a bit of a different story. Um, yeah. But definitely, definitely take the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds amazing. Oh, sorry, sorry uh, Christine, you go. <laughs> I was just going to say, just before um, COVID um, happened and we went into lockdown, I was just in the process of planning another trip, and that was with the help of Annie, who's here. Um, 
Annie's mum is involved with a charity and um, we were going to arrange a trip, weren't we, Annie? And we were just getting all excited about, about it. And then we went into lockdown and we weren't able to. Do you just quickly want to tell us a little bit about the charity that your mum's involved with? Yeah, sure. So um, my mum works, uh, well, she actually um, runs a charity in the UK, um, but it's paired with a um, similar charity in Uganda, um, which works to break the cycle, cycle of poverty through healthcare, um, through healthcare education and vocational training. Um, so they run medical clinics um, to give them free healthcare because um, they have to pay for healthcare. And um, my mum is a, um, she worked in a school, um, a special school. Um, and so she set up a learning disability support group because um, they found that as um, the locals got used to um, kind of medical professionals being in the villages, they kind of brought out their um, children with disabilities because having a disability in Uganda is very much um, frowned upon. They think that you have been cursed and um, that you've had some kind of witchcraft been put on you. Um, so yeah, my mum's kind of set up this lone disability support group and yeah, essentially we were going to go out and kind of visit them mm -hmm. and they have links with a um, clinic which um, build their own prosthetics and wheelchairs. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of, yeah, that's what we were going to do. Oh, brilliant. Such a shame that we've not been able to do that. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we can say once things start to ease, we can start to get those kind of opportunities and experiences back up and running. Um, and obviously, there are still lots of amazing things that we can offer you um, whilst you're here and studying with us at the moment. And fingers crossed by next September, when we're looking at uh, the next entry of learning disability nursing, things hopefully, fingers crossed, will be a lot different by then. OK, well, we're sort of coming towards the end of the of the sort of live stream, but we have got a couple of questions that we've just not got quite round to answering yet. So we're just going to, I think it's just key to bring some of those in just because it'd be good to answer those. Um, so one of them was about how similar is learning disability nursing to children's nursing? And I know we have spoken a little bit about that, but um, Sam, what if someone was looking and they knew that they wanted to work with children and they've perhaps done lots of research about into children's nursing because they know the role, they've seen it and they sort of recognise it. But, you know, what? how could we sort of persuade them that actually learning disability nursing could still give them that big tick in the box about working with children and looking after them? Sure. So um, a bit what like Justine that was saying earlier, um, you can work as a learning disability nurse anywhere where there are people with a learning disability and because learning disabilities are lifelong that includes people of older age and children and young people as well um, you'll see from Izzy's placement that she's working in a CAM service which is children and adolescent mental health services I think that was all the letters um, and a lot of my colleagues that I went to university with now work in specialist children's roles so one's gone on to be a specialist school nurse there are some health visitors that I know um, one has gone on to work uh, with uh, vulnerable people and safeguarding so if it is children that you're interested in working with um, absolutely LD is for you but we also get a lot of applicants from uh, people that might work in schools or might support people with special educational needs and learning disability nursing is, is probably more appropriate for um, you with those kind of skill sets than children's nursing. Um, so it is, we do have a lot of transferable skills, which is also part of the reason that um, we're quite keen to recruit learning disability nurses is because LD nurses often get pulled away to work in other specialisms because we have such transferable and good skills. So uh, we've had uh, people that have gone to work with people uh, with end of life care, specialist nurses to work with people with mental health problems, people to work with learning disabilities in prisons, um, lots of specialist roles because of our transferable skills. So absolutely, if, if children with uh, special educational needs or children with autism is your thing, then definitely have a look at learning disability nursing. Brilliant, thanks, Sam. Uh, the next question is, do you need to have experience before starting the course? So um, Justine, should someone who wants to come on the course, what kind of experiences are we looking for? Well, any experience, working with people is valid. So even if you've worked in a pub or um, I had one student once who'd been a holiday rep and it's all about working with people and having good communication skills and patience. 
as well. So anything like that is, is relevant experience, but it is useful to have a little bit of experience to understand what it is like to support a person with learning disability, whether that's in a school setting or a day centre or even like a youth club or something like that. Um, but it's not an absolute, you don't have to have had that experience in order to be able to do it, but I think it would be helpful. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. And then the last one that we'll come to is um, about do students wear a uniform? This is a good one to ask our current students. So do you have to wear a uniform? And if so, who provides this? So Izzy and Annie, are you going to jump in on this one? Yeah, we have to wear a uniform and uni give it to us, but not every placement will require you to wear your uniform. Okay. Yeah. Anything to add to that? Anything else in terms of, because um, I know I think before we've spoken, we, when I've seen them, when I've been in the hospitals, they've got these um, epaulets, haven't they, Sam? I think you've spoken about it yeah. before, Sam H. Um, so what does that mean? What does that show us if we see students with those on? What does it mean? Yeah, so um, I can never say the word. I don't know why it's got too many L's in it and it gets stuck around <laughs> teeth, but you're right. Those shoulder pad things, epaulets, I did epaulets. it. Um, <laughs> we give you different ones every year. So at a glance, people can see what year of study that you're in. And that's really helpful for students in managing um, their expectations of you and in making sure that you're aware of your limitations as well. So obviously in your first year, you're not as experienced as you are in your third year. So everyone's expectations of you are going to be different. So it's a good visual indicator of that. Um, just to add to the uh, uh, uniform question, when I did my training, I got my uniform in my uh, first year and didn't need it at all until my very last placement of year three. And then it didn't fit um, <laughs> because I must have comfort, you know, comfort eating my way through the course. Um, but the university did support me to get a bigger size. So yeah, we'll do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose when it comes to uniform, it's just about checking with the um, placement who you're going to as to what the uniform policy is and, and what you're expected to kind of wear. Is that right? Is that the kind of gist that you need to do? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. OK, well, they're, they're all the questions that we had. So um, it's yeah, it's been good to sort of chat to you all and find out a little bit more about your experiences. And um, obviously great to have um, Sam with us, who's um, obviously doing amazing stuff since she's graduated. So it's lovely to hear from you and obviously have our current students as well. Um, I'm conscious that Joanna Blesser keeps jumping in and out. I think she's having a few technical difficulties, but let's see if we can bring her back in if she's there just so that we can know. Bless her. Oh. Hi, Joanna, are you there? Can you hear us? Okay, well, maybe she'll, <laughs> we'll come back to another point, but it's good to have um, all of our current students with us as well. And it's great to hear your perspectives as um, what it was like pre-COVID and what we're doing now and how we're getting on with that. And I know that you're all um, in your third year now. So um, obviously it's getting to that crunch time now where you're in that final stretch um, before you go out and, and hopefully have... Um, you know, those progression opportunities that we've heard so much about at the start of the live stream. Um, obviously, you guys must be really excited about what the future holds for you and, and obviously where your career is going to take off. So thank you for joining us. So um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, end on just me, Sam and Justine, just so sort of we can just give our final kind of comments. So let's bring everybody back. OK, so we've sort of gone round circle, haven't we? Started out talking about what a learning disability is. We've spoken about what the role is. We've spoken a little bit about the course. And um, so hopefully we've given lots of information there for people to go away and really consider um, you know, about the role and about the career. But Justine, sort of final remarks from you then. So anyone that's watching that's thinking, OK, I'm, you know, still not sure about learning disability nursing what else can I find out how else do I find out more information what would you recommend well certainly if they want more information please get in touch I think you're going to share our email addresses so yeah, Sam and I, yeah. Yeah. please feel free any questions at all um, I'm very happy to receive them and I'll answer um, as soon as I can and look at the website also that tells you a little bit more about it and the, the main thing I would say is really repeating myself, but what I said earlier, I'm because I'm quite old, I qualified in 1995, so it's a long time ago, and I can honestly say I have never, ever regretted that decision to become a learning disability nurse, not for one day. Some days have been quite tough, quite stressful, particularly when I was a manager in the NHS, but never, ever 
regretted that decision to do learning disability nursing. Sam, how about you? So, sort of, if anyone wants some um, advice about applying, what would you suggest? Well, the best thing I can suggest is, as you've seen today, hopefully, we're all quite nice, we're all quite genuine, and we're all quite relaxed. So, be yourself, because that's where I know people get nervous with interviews, but all we're trying to do is find out more about you. So, if you're honest with us, just be open, be yourself. Um, that's all we want to see. And uh, similar to Justine. Um, learning disability this is one of those careers where I think you need to be open to surprises. Um, I never wanted to be a nurse. It was never a career goal. Never knew about learning disability nursing. I fell into it almost by accident um, and loved it. And I've been qualified nine years now, I think. Um, and I'm still here and I'm still loving it every day. I still rock up for work, so it can't be that bad. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. OK, well, we hope you've all enjoyed that live stream and you've um, taken away the information that you need. We do have an open day that's coming up on Saturday, the 14th of November. And I'm going to post in the comments now um, where you can obviously book on and come and join us. And um, you'll hear again from nursing um, academics and we'll be joined by a learning disability um, academic on that live stream as well as students. So again, to get some more information about the course, obviously, we'd love to have you on campus and be able to show you our amazing facilities and, and show you around. Um, but we will be doing some of that on the live stream so that you can get a little bit of a feel for, for what the university is like. So I'm just going to bring everyone back in just so that we can all be on screen to say bye bye to everybody and to thank everyone for giving up their time today. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, it's great to have spoken to you all. And um, we look forward to you joining us on another live stream soon. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you very bye. much. Thanks, Vanessa. <laughs>